Hi. Hi. Hi again. And thank you for watching. On today's show, we're going to show you how to use your new EQ in your new NEX 2015 Pioneer product. I know, right? How cool is that? Yay! Stay tuned. All right, so you got your new NEX product and you're like, man, I've heard so many cool things about this. This is supposed to have like this awesome EQ in it. Uh, this looks like a lot of buttons and menus and things like that that I don't know how to use. And you stumbled upon our video on Facebook or YouTube or wherever and you're like, oh cool, these guys are gonna tell me how to use it. And we are. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is if we just wanna adjust the EQ, we can tap this and this will just take us to the EQ. Okay, and then we can motor through it. All right, now if we want to actually get to the audio, we're gonna hit the gears. Come over here and we're gonna tap the speaker and then we can go to the EQ. Now across the bottom, you'll notice that it has presets, all right? And then over here, it has two customs. That'll allow you to give you a place to start and then you can make the your, your adjustments into custom presets so that you can use them for uh, listening to CDs or MP3s or iPods or whatever you want. Uh, all right, so then this is the back arrow has a balance and fader. Balance and fader can be just dragged across. And then of course you can use the arrows to fine tune if you need to. All right, we'll use the back arrow. Down here you'll have mute level, which really has nothing to do with the EQ. Sp rear speaker. Now some people don't like rear speakers. You can turn them off. Or you can turn on and off the subwoofer. has speaker level. Now speaker level, I do like to make a favorite, and I also like to make the listening position a favorite. And actually, I like to make the time correction a favorite, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, speaker level. What speaker level allow you to do is adjust the volume for each speaker. This one's at negative three, this one's at negative five, four, and you can turn those up and down. Your subwoofer, you can turn those up and down. Okay, we'll come out of there. Now the crossover basically has a front, rear, and sub uh, crossover. So from here, you can turn it on, and then you just slide it back and forth. And what this will do is this will give you your frequency. So it's gonna be high pass. So we got 200, we got 100. And then from here, we can pick the slope. Now a lot of people ask, what, what is the slope? And the easy, this is the best graphical representation of it, okay? A lot of people think that the crossover is where sound is gonna stop. Well, it's not. I know, right? Um, it sounded snotty. Uh, it, it's not, basically, this is the point where sound is gonna gradually decrease in volume, okay? And it's how sharp you want it to do that. So if you don't want your speakers to ever play 50, 80, 90 hertz at all, you'd pick a steep slope, like 18 dB per octave, okay? If you want a more gradual roll off, meaning you want it to play some mid bass, you cross it over at 12. And if you want a lot of mid bass, like you got a really high end driver, and you, you want it to play 50 hertz, just obviously not at the volume of the rest of it, you can cross it over and use the 6 dB slope. Most factory amplifiers come default to 12, so if you want the adjustment uh, that this head unit offers, make sure you turn those off. Now the rear works the same way. You turn that on independently, and let's say you have uh, bigger speakers in the rear than you do in the front, so you can adjust that. Um, so you can have two different crossover points. Or if you have small speakers in the rear, let's say you have a four inch in the rear for whatever reason, and a four inch is gonna, you don't wanna blow that, so you're gonna cross it over 200, and you don't want any bass at all coming through that speaker, so you're gonna make it a very steep slope. And then you can do the same for the subwoofer. Now most people want a nice roll off, 12 dB is usually good. Um, you know, 6 dB is kinda weird, and you don't want your subwoofer to play up into the, the high frequency range. And sometimes when you do that, it just, it doesn't have sound real natural, so 
you're going to have to play with that, but you're definitely going to want it to be 12 or 18. And then, of course, you can turn the phase of the subwoofer in and out. We'll get out of that. Now we have subwoofer setting basically just gets you into that same, it's a redundant listening position. Now, listening position is a generic way to set up the time alignment. If you tell it where you're going to sit or who's in the car, it'll go ahead and make a generic time correction for you. If you decide you don't like it, you can always hit off. Now that takes us to time alignment. Time alignment, you see these numbers here in inches. This is the distance that you are away from the speaker. Okay. Now this can easily be done with a tape measure and a friend that can see. Uh, and you can use a tape measure to measure where you are from said speaker. Okay. And then you go into speaker volume or speaker level and you can increase or decrease to move the sound across the front of your dash. So some people like it to be centered above them. Old school people like myself, we like it to sound like it's coming out of the center of the dash like a fake center channel. So we're going to adjust the volume here and here to achieve that. Now, if you don't want to screw with all that, but you're thinking, man, that's a really cool feature. You can go online and buy Pioneer's EQ and inside the unit, at least on the seven inches, there's an auto EQ mic position right here. And from there you can do it and they'll do an auto for you, auto EQ when you turn it on and off. And of course, once there, you can go and adjust it as well. I damn. Boy, it's got a lot of stuff, a lot yeah. of buttons. But I mean, it's got a lot of buttons, but it's got a lot of presets. So I mean, for the most part, the presets will get you really, really close to where you want to be. And then you can go in and fine tune it. And remember, you can always turn it off or set it back to zero. So it's not like you're really going to screw it up. The crossover is really the only scary part. You want to make sure that when you're tuning the high pass that you have the subwoofers off because you won't be able to hear them distort if your sub is in the background going do, 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 you know, and then your door speakers are going, oh God, stop, put that shit. <laughs> but anyways. Okay, so a little helpful tip. I know, tip in a movie. Um, <laughs> All right, that's pretty much it for this guy. Uh, thanks for watching as usual. We do this twice a week. Yeah, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And you can find us where? On Facebook, Instagram, oh, and YouTube. All right, I know, right? All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great night, and we'll see you next time.